right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Monday afternoon. Another edition of Knicks Weekly, episode 92. Presented by Underdog Fantasy, man. Go to Underdog Fantasy and use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. On today's episode... We're going to get back to this controversial foul call on or non-call on Jalen Brunson last night's loss to the OKC Thunder. Plus, did Josh Hart sound the alarm? Josh Hart with an ominous comment after last night's game in terms of the fate of the New York Knicks. Plus, we will take a look at the Knicks schedule ahead, including a big matchup down in South Beach on Tuesday against the Miami Heat, man. So lock in, hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel. Another edition of Knicks Fan TV, man. Let's go. Lock in. The number one show for the fans by the fans is back on and popping for a lunchtime live stream. So salute to my guys in the chat. Salute to everybody on the grind. We are here live and direct. I see my franchise channel members are in here. Salute to you guys, Brian Arate, Christopher Scott, Lopez, what's good? To Lifted, Malik Shabazz, my two cents always in here. Salute to my guys, man. Salute, salute. Man, I was aggravated last night. How are you guys feeling tonight? Because last night, I had a great Easter Sunday, had a great time spending it with the family, everybody watching the game together, had a great meal, we broke bread. It was a great classic time. And then I watched the game and it was an entertaining game. It was a back-and-forth battle. You know, you saw the young stars of the Oklahoma City Thunder putting the team on their back without SGA really being effective in this. The Knicks finding a way to grind it out here. And then things just all fell apart in the fourth quarter. Completely soured the day, and I was tight. I was aggravated, man. And not to mention the fact that early in the day, my guy Juan Soto has been going ballistic and leads the Yankees to a sweep of the Astros, so I'm hoping the good juju would head over to the Garden, but that was not to be the case. That was not the case. That was not the case at all. Knicks losing this one, 113 to 112. And the big storyline here, man, is... The big storyline here is Jalen Brunson. It's been a storyline all season long where he's just not getting the respect, man. He's just not getting the respect of someone who's been named to his first All-Star. He's an Olympian. He will, you know, he's in the World Cup with his team. And he's being treated like a civilian out there. Absolutely disrespectful. Now, the Knicks didn't help themselves last night because they did go 23 of 34 from the free throw line. They missed 11 free throws, shot 67% from the field. So when you get your opportunities, you still got to clean up. But the Brunson situation is just getting really, really bad, man. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just absurd. You know, let, let me, let's just run back to the play here. And you just can't tell me that this is not a foul. You cannot tell me on any planet... <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know. You can't tell me on any planet that this is not a foul right here. Uh, I'm sorry. He makes his drive, makes his turn, and gets absolutely hip-checked by Lou Dort. I mean, what more do you have to do to get a call here? In crunch time. Look at number 33, number 33, referee, right in front of the action, swallows the whistle. You have the baseline referee right there, swallows the whistle, all right? If you want to tell me Gucci ref was out of the play, he's at the top of the key, he's by the the right elbow, okay, fine, he's out of there, he couldn't see. But these two zebras right here, both should have hit the whistle on that. He, He hit the deck. Damn near hit the stanchion. So what exactly are we talking about here? Where is the love? Where is the respect for Jalen Brunson in his own building? Come on, man. From bad to worse, in his own building, you guys are treating this guy like this. 
unbelievable. I, I mean, it was just unbelievable. Now, look, is that the only reason why the Knicks lost this game? No, absolutely not. And and I'm a guy, I don't like to put it all on the referees. I really don't. But at the end of the day, if it's egregious, it's egregious. If it's egregious, it is egregious. And we just have to call it like it is. Unreal, man. If it's egregious, it's egregious. And take a look at this. Tommy Beard, Jalen Brunson free throw attempts per game in December. 7.3 attempts. January, 6.5. 7.6 in February. 4.7 in March. Went to the free throw line. 4.7 attempts in March. I mean, that is just unreal. And in this game, look, I saw him getting the benefit of the whistle. And then you had other times where it was just blatant, blatant fouls, and he's getting no respect. So what can we do here? Uh, here was Tibbs after the game. This was this was Tibbs' reaction to everything. This was courtesy of our guy Chris Percy Einan of uh, the Fordham Rams radio broadcast. Here, here's Tibbs after the game. Oh, let me let me. Uh, would help if I unmute this. So to everybody in the chat. All right, here's Tibbs. Right where you see, right where you see, right where you see. That's all I can say. Right where you see. Right where you see. Right where you see. Right where you see. That's all I can say. Right where you see. And Tibbs is frustrated, man. I mean, he had just had to talk about this on Friday when the Knicks were getting smacked around by the Spurs and getting no love. So Tibbs is clearly frustrated here. Now, here was Brian Windhorse, who had a lot to say on this topic, man. Here was Brian Windhorse on the Brunson lack, no call. And here's what he had to say here. Let's, let's listen to Brian Windhorse. To get clean looks in the paint and to really attack the playoffs, which is, yes, not that even Chenzo's had a great year and Jalen Brunson's had a phenomenal year and they've got Deuce McBride out there and they could get a lot of threes up. But when they get down the stretch of the game, it's just very hard for them to get clean looks in the paint and to really attack the rim. And it's just all on Jalen Brunson to do it. If you have a, for as great as Jalen has been, he's had an unbelievable season. If you have a six foot guard that you're relying on to do all of that for you on offense, we've seen that recipe in the playoffs time and again. It's just really a struggle. George, the other thing with Brunson, you know, he doesn't have the reputation of like a Harden or a Trey Young, but he's a foul hunter. Oh, yeah. You know, he uses the dark arts, and I'm not taking a side. I mean, there were obviously times this year, I mean, the game in Houston being the grade A example, where Brunson got an unfair whistle. But this is what the league referees are cracking down on. The the fouls that he gets sometimes are not what they're going to give him. And I think the Knicks, as impressive as they have been, they frankly they're in a spot these games are all so tight down at the end of the game they need these calls so it feels it feels a little bit more painful because they're they're in so much need of them right now he is one of those guys right right he doesn't have the reputation but he does seek that and i think the officials understand that that also has coincided with let's face it less calls in general yeah as we've turned post all-star break. So that doesn't help his cause either. So you have those combination of things working against him, plus the injury issues. Uh, Yeah, look, they're just, they're a a barely above 500 team without. All right, so so, so we'll we'll button that up. So Brian Windhorst, he's a foul hunter. He's a foul hunter, says Brian Windhorst. I mean, someone tell me what that has to do with Not getting the call right. This goes, we got to file this under worst take. That is going to be this edition's of worst take. Brian Windhorse, he's a foul hunter. All right? Isn't the name of the game in the NBA to draw contact, get to the free throw line, 
all of a sudden he's doing something completely different. Every star in the league tries to draw contact. It's called being smart. To get free points, to get easy baskets, to give your guys an opportunity to rest, and yourself included. They've been doing that since the beginning of time. Every superstar in the league tries to draw fouls. It's called playing basketball. He's no different. The problem is it's not consistent. It's not about foul hunting and the referees looking at it. This was the last play. The guy goes flying into the stanchion in front of two zebras and gets no call. That's not foul hunting. That's not foul hunting. Lou Dort pushed him, playing in Jane. So that is a worse take by Brian Windhorse. Yes, guys in the league have done it better. Harden and Trey Young, yes, they do that. Especially with the rip-throughs. And Brunson has done a good job of doing that as well. It's called being smart. So what are you telling me? That a guy who plays this physical is not supposed to sell the physicality? You have to sell it. Or else he would truly get nothing. Every player in the league does it if you're smart. So the idea that he, he's a foul hunter, give me a break. The guy goes in and draws legitimate contact. He's a physical player. And this is what happens to guys that can play physical and that can handle getting pushed around. He's a stocky kid. He's tough. But that doesn't mean he's just supposed to go in there and just take a beating and not try to plead his case to the referees. So let's stop the nonsense with with the foul hunting business. This is a guy, he's ranked 18th in the league in free throw attempts. 27th last year. And again, I watched the same game last night, and they gave him lighter calls, especially in the fourth quarter. They gave him lighter calls in that one. So the bottom line is it has nothing to do with foul hunting. They missed it. They blew it. And I guarantee you when the two-minute report comes out, I don't think it's out yet. We haven't seen it yet. It might come out while we are live here. Number one show for the fans by the fans on a popping. Maybe we see it at that point. But by that point, it's too late. And again, there were several opportunities for the Knicks to win this game, and they didn't get it done. They couldn't get to stop on Shea. Couldn't hit your free throws. Collapse in the fourth quarter. Bench has been trash. You can go on and on and on. DiVincenzo was, wasn't good. Hart not wanting to shoot at critical, at critical times. There's a lot, there, there are a lot of factors as to why they lost this game and couldn't capitalize when OKC was not playing their best. Even though Jalen Williams was cooking. I mean, as a basketball fan, you had to enjoy, enjoy that kid. His performance. But we got to get our guys some respect, man. En- enough is enough. Call it consistent. That is what this thing is all about. Call it consistently. Lopez 104 the, uh, says uh, the, t- the two-minute report does nothing. Yeah, it do- doesn't do anything. But I guarantee they will admit that they are boneheads which they typically do. So it's it's just unfortunate. And it, and it just is what it is, man. So the Knicks catch the loss, uh, were unable to gain any ground in the East. They had third place in their sights with the Cavaliers losing. But they were unable to uh, to take advantage there. So now instead of a win, it's a tough loss. And you and you're left with some question marks. And here was Jalen Brunson after the game on the play of his team and, and where things go from here. Here is Jalen Brunson. This is courtesy of uh, SNY videos. Here we go. Um, yeah, we just got to be focused. We got to continue to prepare. And um, I can't just turn it on once playoffs start. And so um, obviously we're in a decent position, but we can't get comfortable. And um, 
the has spare mindset going forward. <laughs> Can't get comfortable, man. And that's what you like about Brunson. He holds himself accountable. He holds himself to a high standard. Don't worry about the 61. Don't worry about this, that, and the third. We've got to get better. Can't be waiting on the cavalry to arrive. So he's tight, man. He, he, he's definitely tight. Uh, some more stuff. This was, this was Brunson about the bench minutes because that's another issue. How do they survive while Brunson is on the bench? And here he is, his reaction to uh, the woeful bench play as of late. Here he is. I mean, as a team, um, whether I'm out there or not, we need to be better. And, um, it starts with making free throws. It starts with, it starts with not turning the ball over. So um, it doesn't really matter who's out there. You know, we can't point blame anyone. But as a team, we need to be better. And so that's been a, a bit of an issue there. They were outscored by 18 in the minutes where he was on the bench. And I believe they had outscored OKC by... 17 when he was out there. So it's tricky, man. Knicks are in a tough spot. They need reinforcements, and the guys that are on the team have to play better. That, that's just the bottom line. So to all of our franchise channel members in the building, man, if you guys are a franchise channel member rocking with the franchise today, throw an emoji in the chat so to you guys on Money Making Monday. I think somebody had put that in the chat earlier today. I like that. Money Making Monday. Will Latimer on the grind. Let's go, Will. Kareem Alston Rosales. Fanchez, franchise working hard. This is what I do, man. This, this, is, this, is what, this is what I do. I talk Knicks. talk NBA. And, uh, and we've got a budding network behind it. But all thanks to the fans. So definitely salute to you guys. Much appreciated. Keep rocking. Keep hitting that thumbs up button for your boys. Share these videos and subscribe to the channel as well. If you guys are looking at the chat and you can't chat with the, with the thousands of people here, go ahead and hit the subscribe channel, to sc- subscribe button to get involved. It's free to do so. And, uh, and that's what makes things go, man. Tap into the algorithm. John Tribovich, my Croatian guy. Hold, salute. Abdul, salute, salute. Jalen said, what was Scott Perry's motivation Monday? We'll, we'll close with that. We'll, we'll definitely close with that one. So that's, a, that's the Brunson situation. A little frustrating, but it just is what it is at this point. Now, on to Josh Hart. Did Josh Hart sound the alarm last night? Let's listen to his comments on postgame in reaction to how this team gets by Without their main guys, namely Julius and OG and Obi, even Mitchell Robinson, here was Josh Hart. Um, nah, I mean, I- I'm looking at it like um, this is a team that we're going to have. You know, uh, you know, I-, I think that's how, you know, we have to approach it. You know, that, that those guys, um, you know, are coming back. And then obviously we'll be pleasantly surprised if they come back. So, um, you know, I'm not in those medical conversations or anything like that. So I don't know, you know. But, um, you know, we got to approach it every game and the end of the season that, you know, those guys aren't coming back. And if they if they do, be be pleasantly surprised. Mm. Shout out to uh, KFTV Tyler for doing that producing work and editing, editing out the profanity. This is a family show. Great job, Tyler. I have to assume that they're not coming back. And we've got to go with the guys that we have. Now, I had jumped out the window a little bit last night because I was just a little aggravated and aggy. And, uh, and I did think he was sounding the alarm, waving the white flag. But after I had listened, listening to it, after I got a chance to listen to it and process, I think he has the right mindset. You know, you don't know what's going on with Julius. You don't know what's going on with OG. But you can't wait. Same thing that Brunson said. You can't sit around and wait. You can't play the what-if game. They have to go with the guys that they have and produce. That's just what it is at this point in the game. You got eight games left. You have eight games left, so they've got to push forward. They have no other choice. What more can they do? And he's got to, he's the main guy. I keep telling you guys that. You know, I was asking Scott Perry who his X Factor was in the playoffs. He says it's... uh. 
it's Mitch Robinson. My obvious X factor is going to be Julius and how he looks in his return. But my my X factor in terms of the guys who are present and are on the court is Josh Hart. No question about it. Who is going to help Jalen Brunson in this playoff dogfight? Hart's role is going to be critical. No, I'm not looking for him to replicate Julius Randle's production as a star would in terms of how he double draws double teams and makes his teammate better. But Josh Hart, he's got to be Josh Hart. He's got to play his Josh Hart game for this team to have a chance. And that means being a bit of a live wire on the defensive end, on the boards, out hustling, leading the, leading the team in the hustle stats, trying to get out and transition when you can. In the playoffs, it's a little bit less. You get a little bit less transition. Teams are taking a bit better shots. They're trying to take better shots. Defense is tightening up, so you don't have that fast-paced game. But when you have those opportunities, you got to capitalize. Josh Hart's got to be a key there. But my biggest swing skill for Josh Hart in these playoffs is going to be a shot taking and shot making. Shot taking, shot making. Because when the teams go back to that Scott Perry interview, just like he said, when I was asking him, I asked him one key thing. How do teams prepare for each other when you've seen each other already? You know, you've seen these teams three, four, even five times in the case of the Knicks. So how do you prepare? And from Perry's standpoint, it's like, listen, they're going to go in terms of your game plan. Okay, what what did we do well? What were we successful at in this season from a Knicks standpoint? Well, from the opponent's standpoint, it's going to be like, well, where were the Knicks weak at all year? Who can we test? Who can we try to exploit? And I think when the teams are defending the Knicks – It's going to be Josh Hart's ability to be gun shy. So I think you'll see a lot of zone. I think you'll see the same thing you saw last year, especially in the Miami series with guys dropping off of him to pay more attention to Jalen Brunson to get out on the shooters if McBride or DiVincenzo are closely aligned to Hart. I will leave him. Let's let's send two to the shooter. So his... Ability to impact a series is going to be on a shot making, shot taking, shot making. Go back to game one in that Cleveland series. Josh Hart won that game for them in crunch time. Clutch shot making. And you go to the game six loss or the game of the Miami series. No, not all on him, but the shooting was woeful. So he, you know, he's going to have, he's going to, he's going to have to be a much more consistent and confident shooter in the playoffs. I think that that's going to be um, major for Josh Hart. I, I really do. Definitely. If you guys want to tap in on the Discord, go ahead and do so. I'll, I'll take some calls. Take some calls on the Discord. So to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP on the Solo Dolo Knicks Weekly, episode 92. We just talked about the Brunson free throw controversy. We're talking about Josh Hart. And so the question becomes, with eight games left, with everything that we know, how concerned are you guys? You know, how concerned are you guys with this team? Because when it's going good, it's it's looking good. But when it's going bad, it's a lot of question marks. And so... This was a clip from uh, ESPN's Get Up with Tim Legler and Jay Williams. I'm going to play this clip on their reaction to this game, and then I'm going to react to it after that. So let's everybody in the chat hit that thumbs up on Feed Boys. Here we go. Last night, Thunder wind up winning late SGA with a big shot. Knicks lose another heartbreaker and nail biter. And then there's uh, that bad mojo, or not mojo, but just sort of bad comments about the possibility of getting back some of their injured stars. How concerned if you're a fan of the Knicks who have had such a good season? How concerned should you be? Uh, I am concerned for the Knicks. First off, I think other bona fide superstars in the league get that call that Jalen Brunson didn't get the hip check call on Luke Dirt. I, I think he should have gotten that call. Mm-hmm. I also think that down the stretch, not having Mitchell Robinson, not having Julius Randle, not having some of their front court players is a major. OG on and over. Like last night, that would have been a matchup for Shea Gildas, right? Having OG on that floor would have made a world of a difference. The fact when I hear Thibodeau talk that uh, of uncertainty and not 
not knowing when those guys are coming back, considering the way their last nine games are against playing caliber teams, I am concerned for them down the stretch. I'm very concerned about where else is it going to come from besides exactly. Brunson in a big spot. And this is where Julius Randle comes into it. Because you look at the rest of their pieces, and I loved all the guys they added, but it's built around the two stars. And they only have one right now. Brunson's sensational. And look, there's going to be nights he will be able to carry you all the way through in the fourth quarter. But that's asking an awful lot for one guy that's a smaller guard playing that lead position to do that night in and night out without the secondary star next to you. They've got some streaky offensive players that on a given night can do it. But at not being at full strength, you, you can't look at them as the same threat that they were. And even last night, Thibodeau had to go to four guards and Precious Achua mm -hmm. for a stretch of that game because you don't have Mitchell Robinson, you have don't have Julius Randle, you have yeah. no size available. All right, so what do you guys think there? It's a time to be concerned. On my concern level one at 10, I'm about a seven. I'll keep it real. I'm about a seven. You know, if you want to start with the, the Julius factor not being cleared for full contact and having to be a guy who, as most of us know, and Scott Perry confirmed, is a rhythm player. Clearly, I don't see him coming back before this thing is over with, before the regular season is over with. Could be wrong, but we only got a couple weeks left. It's April 1st. We, we literally have two weeks left in the regular season. So if you're going to tell me, if he doesn't get cleared for physical contact this week, you can forget about it. You can forget about the ramp-up talk. That's just not going to happen. And so I'm getting more and more doubtful that he's going to be able to come back and get into that ramp-up time and get into the proper rhythm. So with that being said, it's like Tim Legler said, who's going to be the guy that's going to help Jalen Brunson? Because the Knicks are going to be walking into the postseason as a one-man show, which I think is going to be very easy to guard in come playoff time. And... And so, as Legler said, you're going to have to rely upon DiVincenzo is going to be one of the most important players on this team from his shot-making ability. And you can't just be going out there just launching threes. And that, that is one of my other problems, what I, what I talked to Scott Perry about. How does this team generate good looks at the basket, high efficiency looks at the basket come playoff time? The threes are not always going to be there for them. And so not having Julius, not having a big man who, not necessarily in a traditional sense, but that can just put the ball on the floor and go get it on his own, I think the Knicks can get into some trouble in half-court offenses when their shots aren't falling. Because it's not enough guys that can get to the basket draw contact, get to the free throw line, or get high-efficiency shots in the paint. I think that's going to be a big weakness for the Knicks in the playoffs. So the Julius factor is going to be big. I'm not necessarily worried about OG as much, but I also do think that OG is going to be another guy that doesn't come back until the start of the playoffs. I truly believe that, that he's not, he's not going to be back until the start of the playoffs. I wasn't surprised one bit that he did not make this game on Sunday night against the Thunder. So who's going to help out is going to be a big question. These guys, you know, from, from um, Devin Chen, you, you have a lot of guys that are inexperienced. They're going to be playing, again, punching above their weight. So who's going to be there to help Brunson? Second issue I have is the bench. Second issue I have is the bench. Major problems. Burks and Bogdanovich look absolutely washed. And I'm no longer going for, well, we have, we have bench players playing as starters. What do we expect? This, that, and third. I expect them to perform against their level of competition. And right now, they're getting overmatched. They're unathletic. They're looking old. Terrible shot selection. How many times you see Bogdanovich get, get stopped on a jump pass? Because he has no lateral movements. Or he's taking bad shots. Burks, forget about it. If you're not setting up for him, it's, it's a nightmare how much he's forcing on his takes. 
Yeah, that was a good one there. I just showed a replay, Burks, uh, uh, on a nice drive there on Chet Holmgren. That was a good drive. But not consistent enough. And they're not giving you anything. That's the problem. They're not giving you anything. And so this bench unit, the hole that has been left in Quickly's departure has not been filled. I don't think it was going to be filled with, you know, a lot of people, we want, we need a Grimes back. Grimes is not going to help this team. And now he's out again with Detroit for the rest of the season. Grimes and Fournier were not going to help this team like that. The hole left by Quickly's departure has not been filled. And so how do they manage those non-Brunson minutes? Especially in the playoffs. You can't play him 48 minutes a night in the playoffs. He needs at least six to eight minutes of rest. So that means in that time, guess who's going to have the, the, the primary responsibility of playmaking? That's going to be Deuce McBride. And so the problem is, is that you're taking him away from his strengths, which has been as an off-ball shooter. And so if that's the case, I can again see this Knicks team getting put in a lot of zone when Brunson is out, or even when he's in, but especially when he's out. And then you're going to have McBride a little bit more limited as a ball handler, playoff pressure situation. I think the bench is going to be a real problem. Had, you know, regardless of, 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 uh, of Julius or OG come back, I think it's going to be a hold. They're going to have to figure out an uh, optimal lineup where you can still get McBride good looks as an all-ball shooter and not have to rely on him to play make. That is why I go back to Josh Hart as a key X factor because they've got to find, try to find opportunities to get buckets any chance they get by any means necessary. So if that's off of a turnover, you get it to Hart. He's getting the team out in transition. Find McBride on the wing. Get it, live rebound, get it to Hart. Push, push, push. Try to find those, ch- those chinks in the armor of the defense to make something happen there. Because just in the half court, if you get that bench unit in non-Brunson minutes in the half court, they're in trouble. Definitely in trouble. Julio Mercado, what do you think about getting Shake more minutes? At this point, with eight minutes left in the season, I don't, I don't see it. If we haven't seen it already, I, I definitely I don't see it. So the bench is is going to be an issue, both now and into the playoffs. So those those are my two keys, man. You know, with 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 the Randall situation, and with with the bench, it's going to be a tough one. Nothing impossible. Nothing set in stone, but legitimate questions, legitimate concerns. I, I think. A reasonable Knicks fan can approach it in that way. Yes, we know that if they are healthy and everything comes together, they can be one of the best in the East. Easily. With their size, their ability to defend, if they have their stars back, you have the stretch with the three-point shooting, you have a nice mix and match with your Twin Towers and Robinson and Hartenstein, but but there's a lot of ifs there. Big ifs. Big ifs. So, just some things to, uh, to think about there. So, to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on your favorite boys. CP the Franchise on the Solo Dolo next weekly episode 92. If you're watching right now, do me a favor. If you are on the grind on your lunch break, throw a hashtag grind in the chat. And I'm also, the way he- hang on, Perry. And also, make sure you guys are hitting the like button, hit the share button, and subscribing to the channel. Do me that favor, please, Knicks Nation. All right, other news, Miami, we are on the way. We'll, we'll talk more about that at the conclusion of the show. But, yeah, there are definitely some reasons for concern. And let's go back to the Scott Perry interview here. Shout out to everybody that watched. Let's go back to the Scott Perry interview from earlier this week. The hottest interview in Knicks Nation right now. Go ahead and go back and watch that. Remember what Perry said, man. About Julius, I, I thought this was very, very fitting. Let's listen to it and and uh, react to it. 
concern as it relates to Julius. I have not spoken to him in a while. I take you back to last year when he was having a terrific season last year and then he got hurt with five games left in yeah. the regular season. And so when he came back in the playoffs, he never was able to regain the same rhythm that he had. And Julius is a rhythm player. Even at the start of this season, because he was out all summer rehabbing from the surgery that he had, he didn't have the time for his normal workouts and the, the way he prepares for NBA seasons, which is important to him. Another reason why he needs time, Julius is a ball dominant player. And so when you have a guy who needs the ball in his hands to be able to create for himself, not only does he need that time to figure out his place again on the court, the guys who are playing with him now have to get used to another guy who has the ball in his hands. Right. Like. So there's a lot going on there from a chemistry aspect that gives me a lot more concern. I'm what do you guys think about that? <clears throat> I thought he was on point. Yo, with Julius being a ball-dominant guy, there's a lot of adjustments that have to be made. His adjustment in playing with that non-shooting shoulder, how does he create separation? How does he create space? How does he get back to his advantages that he once had at the peak of the season? Having to adjust and knowing mentally that one's false move could be it again because surgery is cert looks like it's certainly on the way. And then also, the guys next to him, the guys playing with him, how do they adjust to that? So what do you guys think about that? It's good insights by Perry. That whole interview was good, man. And I'm seeing a lot of major publications... Taken from that interview without the proper attributions. What's up with that, man? We give you heat and we don't get the proper respect. It's expected. But at the same time, I'm not happy about that either. I'm not going to name names. This is a couple publications. If you see the Perry interview being quoted in major outlets, you let them know. Throw a link to the video. We're out here aiding in your in your work, in your production. Coach Rubin, salute. No, not plagiarism. They did they did say, yeah, it's from Knicks Fan TV, but they they wouldn't put the link to the video. What's up with that? We gotta call these people out, man. Just because we're new media, eh, 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 no, we don't play that. But like I said, it is expected. But we got the fans holding us down, man. No more show for the fans um, by the fans. Nah, I mean, I'm for the Knicks, I mean, obviously, OJ. Um, All right. Not sure where those locker room comments are coming from. I got to find that and uh, turn that off before I put the uh, the Shams interview up. I wanted to play the Shams soundbite on OG and Julius. I got to find where... Well, I got it like a thousand windows up, so bear with me. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. I got a lot going on here. What's going on with this? All right, let's see. Oh, hang on. Yeah, inflamed uh, elbow. Nah, I still, I still got sound coming from different sources. Hang on. All right, let me run, let me run back. Sham, salute to everybody in the chat, man. A little technical difficulties, but it's all, right. it's all, all for a good laugh. Okay, here we go. Here was Sham's. On be able to come Knicks back. Injury updates. The, the hope is. Let's pause this and get to it now. Now we got it. Okay, here's Shams. Here we go. This is from the running back. Yeah, but the, uh, the Knicks, no Julius Randle, no OG Ananobi yet. What can you tell us about that? I'm nervous. Yeah, th these are serious losses for the Knicks. I mean, obviously, OG Ananobi, he's been out since March 16th, inflamed elbow. Uh, the hope is that the inflammation goes down. At some point, he's going to be able to come back. The, the hope is, has been that it's going to be when, uh, more of like which day exactly, which hmm. game exactly, when is he going to wake up feeling better than if. Uh, but with Julius Randle, it's a little bit more precarious. I mean, this is someone that's been out since January 27th. We're already into April, and he still has not done anything more than controlled contact with that dislocated shoulder. And Josh Hart, his comments I thought last night were very telling. He said, we have to operate as if neither of those two is going to be back in the lineup. So for the Knicks, it's really a wait-and-see approach. It seems OG Ananobi is more likely than, than, than Julius Randle at this point. But we'll see. 
Um, and Mitchell Robinson also missed the game last night uh, with, with, his, with the ankle injury as well. But All right. <clears throat> so I don't know about you, but I got nothing from that soundbite. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I literally said everything he just said about 30 minutes ago. But uh, but good job by Shams, you know. Anyway, what do you guys think, man? This, this is what it's like being a Knicks fan, man. It can't always be good, people. We got to go through some adversity. It's never worth attaining if it's not hard. You know what I mean? It's never worth it if it's not hard. Femi, Femi on the Discord. Talk to me, man. How you feeling, man? Yo, CP, am I coming through clear? Loud and clear, man. It's your show. Let's go. Yo, salute to everybody in the chat. Salute to the NBA report. Salute Let's go. to the, all the sponsors. Absolutely. You know, you know, hit that like button. Number one show for the fans, by the fans. All these media outlets need to show respect. Facts. You know that. Yeah. All right, so... What'd you yeah, think once about again, the I got a work interview. call in well, about you think five about the minutes, so I'm to be rapid fire. Oh, he's not really listening to me. Okay, go ahead. My fault, my fault. Well, I got I... a work call in five yeah, minutes, ahead, so I'm trying ahead, to be rapid man. fire. So key stats of the night last night, I think the – shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Yeah. I think the number one one was um, the bench points. They had 36 to 18. We had 18. Yeah. Talking about the whole game last night, yeah, it was a nail biter. But I think where we really lost it was the beginning of the fourth quarter when we were up 10 and then went down – uh, we lost yeah. seven points immediately in like one minute. Yeah. So like I've been thinking about like the Deuce McBride, like what he's trying to do. We're trying to ask him to punch above his weight. And I've been thinking about like the Detroit trade. And so this is a little like aside. It's not really directly about what we're talking about. But what do you think comparing Deuce McBride to Quentin Grimes? What do we get from Deuce McBride that we weren't getting from Grimes? Yeah. Because I feel like Deuce wasn't really playing before that trade. Even after quickly was was traded, he wasn't really playing until Grimes was gone. Yeah. So like we're trying to we're asking him to do some table setting, which I think in the playoffs might expect uh we might expect Dante to do some of that as well. But I'm just uh, thinking comparing Deuce McBride, what what are we getting from him that we weren't getting from Quentin Grimes? And then uh in the playoffs, I really think we're gonna need to bring in Precious a little more as well. Like I think at the beginning of that fourth quarter. I would have liked to see Precious on the floor with Hartenstein. Mm -hmm. I think, like, the defense was just really bad at the beginning of the fourth, and then it went downhill. But uh, just rapid fire. Salute yeah. to everybody in the chat. Salute to the sponsors. Salute KFTV. Yeah. No more show for the fans by well, the fans. Thanks well, for taking my call. One more thing. I was I was asking you. Uh, I did say it was your show, so you couldn't hear me when I was asking you the question. But, but way to take over. Uh, what would you think of the Perry interview, man? Yo, yo. Once again, shout out 500 episodes. Yeah. The Perry interview 500. was fire. There's nobody out here that's getting the that's getting the kind of people on the show like yeah. KFTV. There's no other podcast or yeah. Knicks fan show out here that's getting the kind of analysis like you had with Scott Perry. So shout out Ninja P, shout out Parking Lot P, all his um, the the nickname nickname in chief. So it was fire. It was fire, man. Appreciate the call, man. Tap in anytime, man. Salute. Yes, sir. Catch no you doubt. later. So our guy Femi, man. Yeah, he couldn't hear me early. I I did give him the, the I did give him the keys, right, TM. So I, I can't uh, can't be mad at the fact that he didn't 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 hear my question earlier. Sometimes that's a little discord disconnect, but it's all good. It's all good. Great great takes by Femi. And uh, he was asking about Deuce McBride. Shout out to Tommy Beer once again. Since entering the Knicks starting lineup seven games ago, Miles McBride is averaging nineteen, three point six assists, four made threes. Shooting 51% from the floor, 46 from downtown, 93 from the stripe. So as Femi is asking, what does he do that Grimes didn't? A multitude of things, everything. Um, Three-point shooting, consistent, reliable, high volume, knockdown. The playmaking for McBride has been underrated. 3.6 assists, but you got to look at his reads. Is he making good reads? Is he finding guys? And I think he's doing a good job. Especially since, the, you know, that was never one of his true strengths. I think he does do a good job in making the proper reads. He's a smart player. And no, he doesn't get to the free throw line as much because he, he, he's not really not necessarily a north-south player. But he knocks him down and he showed you something in the mid-range. These were all the things we were looking for for Quentin Grimes going into this year, right? 
You guys go back to the season preview show. This is what we wanted, man. And look, I'm, I'm still leaving, hold, holding out hope for Grimes, even though he's not on the team. I like him as a potential player based on what NBA teams need. He's a good kid as well, works hard. You know, he puts in the work with, with Penny Hardaway. He was working with J.J. Reddick. So he, 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 his heart is there. He's just got to put it together on the court. So this year was a setback, no question about it. So hopefully he's able to rebound. Hopefully, you know, him and his brother can get him up out of Detroit, get him into a better situation. You know, get him to like Denver or, or, or a winning team that he can really go out there and learn and be, hey, what DiVincenzo was to the Knicks this year. But shout out to Femi. Okay. Now, let's take a look here because – Last night was an opportunity for the Knicks, presented an opportunity for the Knicks to creep back into the standings. Couldn't do it. So they do fall and uh, fall below Cleveland, or, or stay where they are, rather, in fourth place, which will get you home court in the first round. And, but as of right now, get you a matchup with the Orlando Magic. As of right now, Knicks are a game up on the Magic. Magic have the tiebreaker. They're two and a half games up on the Pacers. Pacers have the tiebreaker. This is a big week for the Knicks. They're three up on the Heat. They won. They have the tiebreaker over the Heat. But, you know, if they lose to the Heat tomorrow, and I'll be there. I hope they don't. If they lose to the Heat tomorrow, that's a full game up. Direct shot. And then Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, the process is coming back. Joel Embiid, according to reports, is expected to be back this week. How does that change things? Eight games left. Knicks are four and a half games up on the on the Sixers. They're three games out of two. So you fit. I mean, anything is possible here. Is it a two-seven matchup? Is it a three-six matchup? Don't sleep on Philly. Will Embiid coming back? That's a, that's a wrench in the system of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Very interesting to see how that works out. So, as Brunson and Hart said, hey, we can't worry about reinforcements. We've got to worry about right now. And that, as we discussed, is, is another part of the issue with the bench play because you look at it like, man, McBride's locking minutes, Brunson minutes, Hart's locking minutes. They need help. They need a breather. They they don't have time to breathe. They've got no time to breathe, guys. It's going to be a dogfight all the way through. So that is a catch-22. Is Yes, they're shorthanded. But at the end of the day, if these guys aren't locking major minutes, they stand a chance to lose a lot of games. Tricky balance. And as you look at it this week, at Miami, home versus the Kings, at the Bulls, at the Bucks on Sunday, throw a record prediction in the chat. What do you guys think? Got almost 900 people in the chat watching on uh, YouTube. So to everybody watching on Facebook, everybody on Twitter as well. Make sure you guys are sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, and all those good things. What do you guys think, man? I would say, you know, Kings are going to want revenge. I think the Miami game is, is winnable. All these games are winnable. I think the Bucs one could be tough, will be tough. I'll go 3-1. and one. What do you guys think, man? I'll go 3-1. and one. I'll, I'll go on the optimistic side. I'll go win over Miami, win at home versus uh, the Kings. Second night of a back-to-back against the Bulls, who also are going to be playing for something. See, that's the thing. All these guys are playing for something. Chicago Bulls, even though they're kind of locked in to the, to, to the, uh, in the playing in the ninth seed, they want to keep that edge over uh, Atlanta. Maybe they can catch the Sixers. I doubt it. Four games left. They're kind of locked in at that nine spot. Nine and ten doesn't really matter, I guess. Well, in the play-in, you want that that home that first home game. They they're gonna have to play two games in the play-in to get out of it. 
but the first one you're going to want at home. So Chicago's going to have something to play for. The Knicks have to play them three times. You look at Sacramento. Sacramento, they're trying to get out of playing territory. They got the Suns on their heels, the Lakers, the Warriors on their heels. So Sacramento is going to be locked in. And then you got the Bucks, who are also trying to maintain their edge at the two spot. They're trying to get their chemistry together. So going to be a tough week for the Knicks. Miami's trying to catch up. I go 3-1. and one. So what do you guys think there, man? As far as tomorrow, Miami, everybody headed down to South Beach at Black Market, Bayside, 401 Biscayne Boulevard. It's going to be a Zovi, man. We got a lot of people RSVP for this thing. So the KFTV Road Warriors are coming through heavy for this Knicks Fan TV link up. Miami, we are on the way. If you guys are watching and you guys are attending, if you need merch, if you need merch and want to save on shipping, Order it today, and I will pack the merch and bring with me. If you need merch and looking to save on shipping, order it today, and uh, and I will bring it down with me. That way, hey, you get it overnight, basically. So <laughs> you get free overnight shipping, and you'll have some merch to wear at the game. All right? So looking forward to that. And, yeah, going to gonna be a good week, man. Definitely going to be a good week. As I said, make sure you guys check in with that Scott Perry interview, man. We talked about a lot of stuff. We have timestamps up on everything and all the content. So make sure you check that Scott Perry interview because we talked about Julius and OG. We talked about he he went in on all the to potential playoff matchups for the Knicks. We went in about 10, 10 minutes on that segment alone. Talks about the brilliance of Jalen Brunson. Uh, Tom Thibodeau hit the job that he's done this year. And then we go in on the Perry tenure as the Nick. Yes, we talked about the Knox draft. And, uh, yeah, good good stuff. Steven Gomez, I see you, man. Uh, I got you. I'm going to bring your snap back. You join us right here. Steven Gomez, all black. I got you, man. So I'm bringing your joint down. No problem. First lady of sports, I got your tees on deck. I'm bringing it down as well. Looking forward to it. Look, it was a tough one last night, tough loss. But in the grand scheme of things, this team still has a little bit of ways to go. No no need to hit the panic button, although there are reasons for concern. And we just got to ride with this team, man. See what they see what they come up with. Adversity makes good character, right? Adversity makes good character. So there that is. And speaking of Scott Perry, shout out KFTV Jalen. He was asking, you know, we we had a good conversation about Scott Perry's Monday motivation quotes. It's one of the things that uh, that I look forward to on Mondays. A lot of them always apply, man. Whenever I read it, I always find a way to apply it to either my personal life or what I'm doing here with Knicks Fan TV and the NBA Report. So here's Scott's Monday motivation. Some of life's greatest lessons are learned during times of adversity. Don't allow them to take away your dreams. Learn and grow from them. Dealing with problems directly makes you stronger, and you will find that future difficulties become easier to navigate. Ninja P preaching. Some of y'all in the chat right now can understand, can relate. I know I can. Let's just keep it a bean. So uh, take it and apply it to your life, man. Take it and apply it to your life because it's absolutely on the money. So once again, enjoy that conversation with Scott Perry. Remember that these shows are available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. Like, share, subscribe. You know the deal. Another banger, man. It's Knicks Fan TV, CP the Franchise. Salute to our sponsors. Go to gingerhales.com and use our code KFTV for 15% off your first order. Ginger Hales Premium Ginger Lemonade. Shout out to Manscaped, our guys at Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. Use our code KFTV for free 20% off plus free shipping and underdog fantasy, man. Play underdog fantasy, pick them games, and daily fantasy. Uh, and use our code KFTV for a first-time deposit match of up to $100. I had to, after last night's post game, I had to make it an expedited one because I had to do PIX literally like two minutes after I ended post game. So I had to jump off, throw in a half suit, and then get ready for TV. And so I didn't even have time to go through our underdog draft that we had finished last night between me and Alex. And let me just see what it looks like here. Hang on. Was it this one? Two-person draft. 
Oh, man, and the Tratocaster won last night. The Tratocaster won last night, man. 290 to 233. Uh, yeah, he got his lunch money today. Congratulations to Alex. His team won. He had Victor Wembanyama, a fantasy darling, man. If you have Victor, Victor Wembanyama on your fantasy team, you're bound to get to get points. Against Golden State, Victor Wembanyama, 32 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 4 steals, and 3 blocks. That is a fantasy basketball all-star right there. He had the Aaron Fox as well. Good job by Fox. 24 points, 6 rebounds, 12 steals, 12 assists, 3 steals, and 2 blocks. Great night. Fantasy night for the Aaron Fox. For my team, my high point getter was Luka Doncic, man. 47 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals against the Rockets. That is 73 fantasy basketball points. And then um, DeMontis Sabonis was okay. 17, 11, 6, 1 steal, 1 block. And then the rest of my guys, SGA, non-factor against the Knicks. Rudy Gobert was decent. Jalen Green, not as uh, not as hot as he's been. And then I had Eamon Thompson as well. I thought he, he's another stack guy, sleeper stack guy on fantasy basketball, but didn't get that. So, anyway, uh, go ahead and try it at home. Play to win, but play responsibly. Go to underdogfantasy.com and use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. See you guys tomorrow. Number one show for the fans by the fans. We out of here, man. So, tell everybody on the grind.